No, don't camera, don't please. Now you can do it. Now, I can't talk. You need it. Yeah, you need it. Louder, louder. There you go. Okay, it's a three, good boy. two, one. No, like I'm the one. Three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the bit of the day, everyone. We did yeah, it. That's the quit. That's how we do a quit. Special day today, isn't it? It's a special day. We have um, special guests today. The one For, guest. First time only. Our very first guest. Who is yeah. it, Keon? It's my brother. You can tell by the lack of hair and beard. <laughs> beard, but lack of hair. Yes. We're kind like um, a Wooly Willy. Yeah, yeah. Where, we just yes. it migrated. Except that I know. lost some of just like the pieces in the box, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and now I look like this. It's not true. But yeah, so um, everybody, this is my brother Cameron. He runs his own podcast and soon to be YouTube channel called uh, Well the Podcast. You want to give us a little plug? It's called Sweating the Small Stuff. We uh, sweat over the science stories and misconceptions that make our world richer. Whoa, he's our per he's your personal brain trainer, Cameron Boozar. That's me. That's the fake title I've given myself. And I'm your personal mind fiend. No, nope, we're Boozer not doing this. Okay. Please stop. <laughs> that's that's my bit. So what? what you sweat over what? The, the so there's lots of moments and just minutia that go into pretty much anything you've ever enjoyed. Think about Jurassic Park isn't just the story of some idiots running around an island doing everything as poorly as possible. It's a story of a man trying to build an actual amusement park. And the fact that Bush Gardens already sort of did that successfully years before the actual book and then movie came out, it has no Jurassic Park has like no excuse to fail. <laughs> if what do you mean? Bush Gardens has been successful hey, for so many years prior. Life finds a way. Okay. Yeah, Apparently, well, life hasn't found a way at Bush Gardens yet. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. <laughs> There's zero life at Bush Gardens. Zero life at Bush Gardens. <laughs> exactly. They 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 know how to domesticate a giant like. Bloodthirsty ape. cat, but not a, not a, <laughs> but not a giant <laughs> bloodthirsty ape. lizard, like, <laughs> bloodthirsty ape, and big elephants. Yeah. So so why why? Why is your brother here, dude? I uh, he's visiting, and that's. I felt like I didn't want to connect with him on an emotional level at home, so I was like, why not do what I I do with you? This is how our friendship happened. So oh, that's how <laughs> I'm just walking on your life. <laughs> exactly. No, the reason we have Cameron on today is because we can't stop talking about the Mandalorian. We really cannot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity for us to do kind of a crossover episode with your channel, with our channel, about how, the, for since your your whole th your whole shtiz is about how we can learn things through cinema, but our whole shtiz is how to take something really interesting, make it into a movie, and how that actually works. Mm -hmm. So we thought that little little known fact, everyone at home, my brother is, and I mentioned it in the Mandalorian little uh, episode about why it's a good western. And this is literally the only reason I'm actually here today. Cameron know too much about Star Wars. <laughs> He knows so much about Star Wars. And on top of that, he's been doing a little bit of research about The Mandalorian as well as that's Ooh, like yes. our yeah. favorite thing. Ooh, so yes. I wanted to bring him on to talk about how to adapt something from like a written medium like lore mm -hmm. and then put it onto screen and how good that looks as well as we'll get into a little bit of spoilers for this yeah. is about the the mid-season for Mandalorian. Episode so, 4 just dropped on Friday. Yeah. Ooh, especially especially because like... Uh, on the Mandalorian video that uh, that, you're, that you did, mm -hmm. there's a little uh, discussing, discussing uh, whether Boba Fett or whatever is actually a Mandalorian and whatnot. <sighs> there's a little bit of a war there. There's a fire. There is, yeah. and I'll tell you right now, there's a justified reason why any of that conversation happened, which is really? there's like the Legends universe and then there's a the Canon universe, and basically what happened was, for the longest time, Star Wars had a big backstory and lots of books and stuff. And then when Disney acquired Star Wars, it was like, this stuff doesn't count anymore. We're kind of doing our own thing. And so oh. in the original canon, Boba Fett definitely becomes Mandalore, which is mm -hmm. the guy who leads the Mandalorians. The Boba so, Fett's like the Mandalorian. The Mandalore. Okay. And um, Jango Fett is like clearly a Mandalorian who grew up under the Fett house. Okay. As a Mandalorian. So like they're definitely Mandalorians. But mm -hmm. under the new canon, it's like they are... Like, they wear Mandalorian armor, but Jango Fett, because he... Which is weird, because of what I'm about to get to with something called the Super Commando Codex. He basically decides, like, um, 
I'm not going to be necessarily a Mandalorian. I'm just like a guy for hire, which weirdly enough is like the super commando codex of being a Mandalorian. Oh, so Mandalorians like in general are mercenaries. So here's like, like there's layers here to okay. unpack. And that's why I really want to be careful with how much I talk about stuff. Cause I can pick any of these rabbit holes and we will be here all day. Because well, especially like in that one comment, cause like in the, I literally had one line where I was just like, I don't know if this is actually Boba Fett and Jango Fett. What I've said already might be wrong. When I wrote that and said it out loud, I'm like, I haven't said too much. There, I, how could I have said anything yeah, wrong? Immediately in the in comments, the longest thread is about like, oh, they're actually not Mandalorians. I'm like, really? And then we, it, it like went back and forth with people like, no, they are. Yeah, they are. And I was yeah. Because like, the other problem is that he's a clone. So, mm -hmm. the, so here's the thing is there is a huge history of Mandalorians. And let me just give you the super cliff notes of it. Okay. The original Mandalorian species is called the Tong. Tong? Tong. I think I pronounced it right. Okay. And they're like these lizard dudes who used to live on Coruscant. Oh. And they humans of Coruscant were like, y'all are too violent. Get the hell out of here. Okay. And so they basically become a nomadic war race that just spans mostly like the mid to outer rim. Just hanging out, conquering everyone they can, worshipping their war god. Until they come across the planet that would later be known as Mandalore, the official new canon home planet of the Mandalorians, according to all the Star Wars stuff that Disney has put out and all the Star Wars stuff that um, George Lucas is putting out. Okay. And they settled on this planet because they found the Beskar ore. The ore that you use to make the Mandalorian armor was here because it's super malleable and yet resistant to lightsaber blades Ooh. it's like the only thing that's resistant to lightsaber blades Yikes. and can take like direct <laughs> blaster fire and be fine like boba fett if you remember his armor has like a ding right on the head in mm. his helmet that's from like a in universe like canon duel from i think the star wars clone Wars series where like he legit like shoots at um i don't remember the name is bane of, something yeah and yeah. they basically there's a shootout between like this pirate dude and boba fett and he gets struck right in the head and he lands a fatal blow but that's where that's canonically comes from. And it's supposed to be, this ore is so great. Okay. And also the planet was home to a giant monster called the Mythosaur. Yeah. And the Mythosaur <laughs> is, if you know the Mandalorian sigil, it's like this weird monster with this like really long mouth and these weird crazy teeth and these tusks coming around you. Mm -hmm or horns or whatever they are. Those are skeletons of the Mythosaur and they're like the sigil of the Mandalorian people. And everything about those creatures being on the same planet as the ore okay. said to the original Mandalore who was in charge of the Mandalorians at the time was like, this is it. This is our house. <laughs> <laughs> like the cosmic war God has basically just told us by putting the most dangerous monster next to the best <laughs> stuff in the universe. This is where we live now. Yeah. And from there, that's like where they set up shop. And for a while, they like go through a few different phases of like, they are just a warfaring race. They they feel like the greatest honor is battle, conquering, and eventually to die in battle. Oh my God. And oh my God. the Jedi are not about this. So, yeah. Um, the Jedi Raven, I can't remember his full Darth name. Darth Raven? He becomes Raven? Sith later. Oh, okay. But mm -hmm. when he's still a Jedi, they go don't, and... Don't, don't spam me in the comments. They I'm sorry. Break up. I'll be right back. They're like... <laughs> Please tell me it's still recording. That's what I thought, yeah. <coughs> there we go. Thanks, sorry, thanks Pop Pop. Sorry. Here, I'll bring them. There you go, perfect right there. Keep it. There? Good? Yep. Okay. Make sure my levels are good. Yep, they're good. That's staying in. So a, a Mandalorian moved yeah. your mic. Mandabor. You can't even see them. They're so fast. Thanks. It's mm -hmm. an audio lowering. So... Robin is like not get about. Get out of my fucking. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you approach me like that again. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, um, Mr. Raven and his incredible Jedi mm. wares decides that he's not about the Mandalorian war culture lifestyle and goes to break up their business. Wait, so Darth Rev. Uh, sorry. Pre Darth Pre Darth. Revan. I'm sorry. That's Jedi how Revan everybody's told leads me. a troop of Jedi okay. to fight the Mandalorians. And okay. what is scary is the Mandalorians are like the only people in the known galaxy mm -hmm. who are pumped about fighting Jedi. Like, Jedi really? are never jazzed about fighting Mandalorians because Mandalorians are A, one of the few if not only groups of anyone who can reliably kill Jedi okay. and also okay. love to do it. Okay. So it's like uh, the worst possible outcome, but um, Robin shows up, 
they bust up the uh, Mandalorians, and this is where they go from being one unified spacefaring conquering group uh -huh. to the more tribal group that leads into this like second era of these are how Mandalorians are understood in mm -hmm. the canon. And then over that time, you see um, there's basically they settle into two factions. There is this, and this is like very recent. This is like pre Clone Wars, almost. Um, I think it's actually like 60 years before the Battle of Yavin where they blow up the Death Star. Okay. Is when they come what, up with what the What year BBY is that? Uh, 60. Or 60 a, BBY. Oh my god, I feel like a what is dingus. BBY? Before the that, Battle of Yavin. That's legitimately like a thing. That there are, there before are, Jesus like, Christ came. Wait, wait, and, is that what BBY stands yes, for? Yes, before I've been the Battle of Yavin. Is. So there's BBY, there's a, ABY? After the Battle of Yavin. <laughs> <laughs> that's their that's their You're Jesus welcome. Christ. Yes. Oh my God. Wow. When the our Lord and Savior Luke Skywalker blew up the big spaceship in the sky. So they didn't they didn't have time before. Yes. <laughs> no, they didn't have time until they blew it up. So until they blew it up. That because like that's the anchor point. That's the fulcrum which, by which all other Star Wars canon is measured. Okay. Is the thing that happens in the first movie. Mm -hmm. Um. And so what happens is the Super Commando Codex is created to say like, this is just like. Instead of all these different tribes having their all like own wild way of how they're going to handle being Mandalorians, it's saying if you're a true Mandalore, oh. you follow this basically like you are not just a bunch of warmongering animals running around trying to cause <laughs> havoc. Yeah, you are disciplined, honorable soldiers okay. who worship combat mm -hmm. and also deserve to have self respect. Okay, self respect so that's where all I this can comes say from. Words. And so, yeah. the Super Commando Codex is what shows up in the Mandalorian. It's this idea that like, this is the way is basically that. It it's is so good. This is the way of the Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. And I should point out, for every time someone comes up with a reasonable way of living, mm -hmm. someone comes up with an unreasonable way. So the counterfaction to the Super Commando Codex way of living was the group known as Death Watch. Are which serious? are the grumpy bad boys of the clone, like if you ever watched the Clone Wars series, yeah, <laughs> the one that's um, Disney put out, that's like the CG one, yeah, the CG one, yeah, the bad Mandalorians who come and are the mean people, mm -hmm. those are um, Death Watch, and okay. there's like like a weird mini arc there. So obviously, massive spoilers for any Star Wars stuff about to come up. The Here other stuff was like Canon Universe, yeah. Well, in it. Really quick so far, let's let's do a quick recap. Yes. For the or how how are you feeling, boy? I'm are you okay? okay? Yeah, I've done a bad you, thing. I'm no, sorry. You guys it's did good. really good to put me in between you, so I'm just like I know that's that. what I. <laughs> I saw your ape brain explode yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, let's do a quick recap of just that. So so far, we understand that there are the Mandalorian people. They ride the Mythosaur that was on the planet Mandalore. And oh, that, they killed them all. They, they killed them all. The the mighty Mythosaur. They had Besker. With, that was so. All this happened on that planet. Yes. And then Darth, or not Darth. And then regular Robin. Regular Robin shows before up he becomes and does Darth the naughty Boy. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, shows up with a bunch of Jedi, and they're just like, "I don't like you, people." Do 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 do. They fight them. They put up a good fight, but then they're they broken. disperse. Yeah. The uh the fats not the fats. Sorry, Mandalores. That's the one Mandalorians. And then so now they have this this. Well, fats become one of the factions. Yeah, right? uh, yeah, whatever. So. so <laughs> yeah. And then now they have this code. This, so, that's the yeah, but that's okay. because they're broken up into these different tribes, they come yeah. up with the Super Commando Codex. Are you okay? They're practically <laughs> they're practically predators. They really oh yeah. They yeah. actually look kind of yeah, like they're 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 practically... Well actually that's you say that the ori the Tong are these like lizard dudes mm -hmm. who like the mask of a Mandalorian is supposed to look like a Tong, like it's supposed to be fitted to a Tong. That's why a human face does not jut down to a like mm -hmm. point like Mandalorian yeah. helmets do. It's supposed to perfect, uh, protect a Tong's face. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're right. Oh, They're yeah. like these weird alien lizard folk mm -hmm. that were the original Mandalorians, but they mm -hmm. die out. Oh, okay. And so here's the other big thing to understand about Mandalorians is I believe they're referred to as ethnolinguistic. If you what? It's a term that refers to if you speak the language and follow their ways, you are one of them. So okay. the thing about Mandalorians that they always like to harp out is that they are an idea. They are not just a people. They are, as long as you are like the down, Joker, he's an idea. As he's long as idea. you're down to be a chill bounty hunting bro, mm -hmm. follow the ways of the Mandalorian, speak Mandoa, you are a Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> you said that. I just imagine uh, the Mandalorian from the sh series that we're watching now, yeah. just like 
grabbing someone with a pile of Besker being melted behind him is like, it's the message. You see? <laughs> it's like we, every, we live in a society. Yeah, that's everything. And then it's just like the lady them. comes by later and makes some armor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they do the <laughs> This is great. Thank you. Like, Thanks. Thanks, man. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's the big wind up. And yeah, there are different beats in there. Like, um, what happens with the Fets and Django Fett and Dooku and all this other stuff. But basically, everything I've just described is the understood canon. Yeah. In like, what I have to say is like, I don't really know how much of that stuff follow, fell over to, I believe the Legends universe is the current one. Because okay. like, those two canons diverge because Boba Fett is Mandalore in the original series. Like, he is the dude who runs the Mandalorians for a while. Hmm. And in the current canon, he's not supposed to be that. And the okay. fact that Jango bails from the, quote, Mandalorian way of life, even though it seems like he's definitely abiding by those rules, mm -hmm. to help create the clone army means that he's no longer considered Mandalorian. Oh, so so okay. the big flame war was about that, about which kind of canon. Yeah, basically okay. you were not wrong unless someone wanted to say you were. <laughs> because fair. You could have interpreted it either way. I'm fine with that. And like, there's honestly, going to be heat on this video, I know. Good, please do. Like, legitimately, I want to understand. Because, like, <laughs> hearing... We, we had a conversation about this before. I was just like, I don't really get it. And we watched a bunch of videos. I'm like, I still don't get it. But, like, I really... Like, we talked on the last episode of this podcast about The Mandalorian. Like, I really love Star Wars. Yes. So, I don't mind hearing more about it. But you, you okay? I think, no, I, I just think, like... Um, I gotta say this. Because, like, you said, like... Um, the Mandalorians are, I don't want to say they're war driven, but they're more like, war is not so bad, you know, they, that kind of thing. They're <laughs> you know? literally motivated by the concept of conquering. They think, yeah. conquer, and this, to be clear, this is pre Super Commando Code. They like the Mon <laughs> Mon uh, Mongols, yeah. kind of? Okay. Basically, right. you can think of them like Mongols, where they're like, the idea of not conquering people is like the worst possible outcome. Uh, for them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the most boring life. So if we how, die valiantly in the heat of battle, yeah, and all of us die. So how does all of this go into the Mandalorian right now? Yeah, the the show. So because it is called the Mandalorian. And yeah. This is what is great about the Mandalorian. Okay. It happens after everything I just told you. Okay. Oh, okay. The Mandalorian, as I understand it, to the best of my knowledge and my avid research, at the mid season, more episodes might come out before yes. this airs. The Mandalorian, well, it, it takes place after the Battle of Endor. It takes place after the Empire Falls. BBY. Yes. Yeah. It takes place oh, ABY. however many years ABY. The YY. And the... Ligma Y. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> sorry, Lee, man, don't die. So funny, he, I died. He also has bronchitis, so I'm I sorry I made I you did. laugh. I thought I didn't until right yeah. now. Um, but yeah, that's the, what like really makes it easy to fall into the canon in this mm -hmm. world is like there are just fixtures that make sense it's like the super commando codex is still around the idea of mandalorians being ethno-linguistic in that anyone can become a mandalorian from any species as long as they accept the mandalorian way and practice it it doesn't mean you have to be born into a mandalorian family it doesn't even mean you have to ne never know mandalorians you basically just have to show up the mandalorian um, recruiting post and say, give me one Besker armor, please. I'd be like, you got to <laughs> yeah. earn that. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, you have... You find these, your own baby Yoda. <laughs> you have these... <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> You're not a real Mandalorian until you have a baby Yoda. You have to have baby so, Yoda. That's, they're just going to sell so many toys. I love that... So there's one image that shows, like, baby Yoda, like, and it just says, like, it's subtitled where it just says, makes cute noise, and then it shows Mando looking down on it, and it says, size is like, this is the entire show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like all of it. Exactly. But that's the thing is like, in, when they were making this, mm -hmm. they didn't like they were like there are these established pieces of what a Mandalorian is. Mm -hmm. And Mandalorians are always been this cool third party wild card faction in the Star Wars universe. You always have like these two dudes are fighting, and Mandalorians are hanging out over here, and whoever pays us the best is gonna get us. Okay. Um, and so being able to take the artistic license to say I'm going to do my homework and figure out what it means to be a Mandalorian and fit it into a original story. They're not trying to tell us this is the story of Boba Fett. This is the established characters that you're familiar with. They're like, this is a new story mm -hmm. with new dudes following rules that we have made very clear in the existing canon that we've decided to adopt. Mm -hmm. And then using that to paint the world. Yeah. Like that, that is why I think the Mandalorian A is doing so well between both the like avid Star Wars fans who are like, 
this is how you make a Star Wars show. Mm -hmm. And among the people who do not have an encyclopedic knowledge of the history of Mandalore. Because mm -hmm. why would you? Yeah, and, and like I, I said it previously, is like for this show, like oh, for this show, you can just walk in on it and like not know everything about anything besides this guy has cool armor, follow him, and that's it. And like you, the only thing you have to know is like this happened after, I guess. The, uh, the, the first y. six movies, the one of the Y, right? and like yeah. that's mm -hmm. it, which mm -hmm. I think is fantastic. It doesn't, it doesn't have any links, and when it does, is very simple, and they explain it, and they don't really need to like. That's the cool thing about. In my opinion, that's like the best way to tell a story is like there's a rich history that you can read books on and we're really just going to drop you into that world mm -hmm. and you will figure it mm -hmm. out. Like the movie Primer is very similar where mm -hmm. you're, they're engineers doing a thing. They're not going to explain what's happening, but you'll piece it together with context clues. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly how The Mandalorian has done it so far that you get that there's a lore, you get that they have a history in whatever way. And you, even though you might not be completely solid on everything going on, <coughs> they really just, it, it makes sense as they, as they mm -hmm. go forward. And especially just the fact that like, it's, it's so good in the, in the way that like I mentioned intertextuality before, mm -hmm. where like the old one, like we start off with this Western feel and then we hear more about this Mandalorian stuff and he has a helmet and all this stuff and you get this kind of samurai feel mm -hmm. and Westerns and samurai movies have actually, uh, come together mm -hmm. on similar themes. Uh, if anybody out there knows the movie The Magnificent Seven, which is like super amazing uh, Western movie, that's based off of the movie Seven Samurai, which was a samurai movie Whoa. and very similar. Whoa! And then they made an anime called Samurai Seven, which <laughs> is the same, but in space. But anyway, all of that stuff cribs off those same story beats. So much so that the ooh, episode four, they, it's basically Magnificent Seven oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. in an episode. We'll show you later. Alan hasn't seen it yet. I haven't seen it. Don't spoil it, guys. Oh, I already I, did. I heard that. It's uh, done. I heard this. You don't. It's spoiled. <laughs> I heard that this uh, chapter four kind of ruins a lot of things, though. I, w I would say that it's, it's not the strongest episode, but I really enjoyed it still. Um, it was actually directed by um, Bryce Dallas Howard, the girl from... Um, uh, we talked about Jurassic Park before. Uh, Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom, the female I'm, I'm lead. Sorry, I gotta hold up. Was Wait, directed what? by her? She directed it. And it's legitimately, I enjoyed it. But what was weak about the episode? Well, we'll have to, we'll yeah, have to have very watch it first. About this, no, like, no, is it, are, I, uh, I go on the forums, on the lines, on mm -hmm. the Twitters. Tell us in the comments and, below what you didn't like and what you didn't and, like. And people, uh, people that I, uh, I don't follow, but people that... I guess follow and respect or whatever their opinions okay. mentioned that like, yeah, this episode practically ruined everything that's coming in. And I'm like, I don't know about that. I'll see it myself and see what's yeah. going on. Well, it, it's not as gruff and tumble. There is some little bits that they throw in. If I can it's just campy. interject mm. real fast. I think the important thing that like what really sells this show to me as opposed to the many other different interpretations. And actually, I think this is why... Star Wars, like the Clone Wars series that they made, got such an excellent reception after it kind of stopped playing in the safe space. It was like, we're just gonna, like, we're gonna get canceled at any moment. We're gonna just do what we want. Yeah. Was that rewarding feeling of giving you just enough that you don't know, like, let's say I'm a new person. I don't know anything about Mandalorians. I don't need to know what Beskar armor is to understand that when he gets some, and he's like doing literally anything with mm -hmm. it, and he gets cool new armor, is probably valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on the one side, if I'm a diehard fan, it feels extremely satisfying to me to be like, I know that. Yeah. I know what that is. But mm -hmm. when I'm a new fan, and I'm also figuring out, like, oh man, best girl armor, therefore, this is an important thing. When you get that satisfying moment of getting to figure out something for yourself, it's really rewarding. And the reason I think that the, the fact that they took this wholly original approach with how they're doing it is valuable because one of the most painful things about any time you go to the movies with a friend who read the book mm -hmm. is, mm. well, that's not how it happened in the book, or that's how it happened in the book, but I thought it was going to be different, or the most annoying thing, that happens in the book. Yeah. I don't care. I legitimately <laughs> yeah. do not but, care. It's a movie. It is a separate medium. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we can keep going. I mean, in a, soon we're going to make sure that we don't run out of camera space like we did in the first Mandalorian <laughs> yeah. episode. But um, so we might even take a break. We might end the episode. But that comes back to what we were talking about, about adapting something mm -hmm. that you're always going to have the people that read the book that want it the certain way. And especially that 
episode four gets away from all this lore. They literally, it's like a bottle episode, not a bottle episode, but it's standalone. It can, Killer maybe? Kind of. Where they go to a separate planet, they're laying low, and by laying low, get sucked into this other uh, Magnificent Seven, mm -hmm. Seven Samurai storyline. And it ultimately plays a little bit more on the character, where mm -hmm. like... I could see this being bad because some people in people's minds, because it goes from, cool, I can imprint a lot on this character because he just wears a mask. I can pretend like he's how I want him to be. Then this one fleshes him out more where he's like thinking different things. He actually talks to people that don't know him and they ask questions. And so then you have this more fleshed out character and it's less of like, oh, he's a rough and tumble badass and this and this and that. And you learn more that might not be what you wanted from the character. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's... And that's the thing about how they're approaching this is like, this is a guy who we don't know. Yeah. So as, as it's equally valid to learn about his character as it is to learn about Mandalorians in general. Mm -hmm. Like getting that taste of like, when was the last time you took off your helmet? Yeah. And I won't spoil it for you. But like having that like, that like the minor, uh, like back and forth where it's supposed to be in one part flavoring the character, mm -hmm. another part flavoring the world and what it means to be Mandalorian. In that one story beat is like it's really rewarding because I don't know who this guy is, so I don't know how he interprets the codex and how he values any specific thing in the codex. Mm -hmm. And then the flip side of that is still you can't get upset that they want to flesh out the character because every meaningful beat we've had for him has been because we fleshed out the character. Yeah, <laughs> like A baby lot. Yoda doesn't hang out yeah. with this guy because baby Yoda is just like actively trying to hang out with the guy. It's because the guy went out of his way to murder a room full of people mm -hmm. to get back Baby Yoda. Yeah, yeah, I think, um, but like going based off of what you were saying and whatnot and like the whole Mandalorian species and whatnot, we, I'm pretty sure you noticed too in the first uh, two to three episodes that he's not good with animals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, there's been two instances where um, I guess you would call it uh, De Deus Ex Machina, <laughs> yeah. where where somebody intervenes and like helps him out and mm -hmm. whatnot, a completely un uh, not unjustified but like unearned, mm -hmm. I guess. But uh, how how does that make you feel that a Mandalorian isn't good with like dealing with animals and whatnot? Also, also, yeah. how does it make you feel just the whole Deus Ex Machina thing mm -hmm. with this so far? So from a storytelling point of view. Star Wars is chock-a-block full of Deus Ex Machina. Yeah. Um, from a, how do I feel about Mandalorians not being the best of everything? So that's the problem with the only taste of a Mandalorian we've gotten so far in the like larger Star Wars universe. Mm -hmm. Whether or not you want to accept him as a Mandalorian was Boba Fett and for an extremely short time, Jango Fett. Mm -hmm. And so because they're both supposed to be the guys, they're supposed to have like established, like I'm good at everything across the board. What's great about this character is the point that we're saying... He's some guy. Yeah. No one knows who he actually is, what his actual upbringing is, mm -hmm. and he's still learning the ropes. Like, he's not even the best at half the things he yeah, normally true. does. He doesn't know how to put back together Starship. Why would he? So the fact that he has to get Deus Ex machina it speaks to an important part of, like, what you see throughout the series so far, which is Mandalorians ask for help. Get help when they need it. Mm. And even when they don't directly ask for it, they all kind of stick together. So it's like the people who help him, they're definitely like, they're benefiting in some way from helping him with the animals. But also speaks to the fact that like his character doesn't need to know everything because then yeah. it wouldn't be interesting. True. I and mean, and, and would, like, I'm with you on that, yeah. We have. 30 seconds. Do we want to keep going or do we want to end it here? Uh, uh, last 30 seconds. I'm going well, to go watch it and we return with uh, what we think. Cool. Good thinking. Smart man. No, stop. Wait. Stop. I didn't even do my big theory. <laughs> While the boys are watching those stupid shows where they're... Stupid aliens and uh, sh cowboys shooting lasers. I would like to invite you guys to check out Frameforge if you have the time. In this channel, we actually like to focus more on, you know, filmmaking and whatnot. And, well, we enjoy it and here they come. Oh no. <laughs> Expect spoilers. Watch out for the spoilers. <laughs> there you go. My man. 
so the, <laughs> so the Mandalorian. We just watched episode four again, and yes. we're gonna. Last episode we talked about episodes one and two. This episode we're gonna talk about three and four a bit. Yes, mostly now we're four. Older, we're older and wiser, and we've, we're deep in the ways of the force. <laughs> this boy, I've never seen the soul leave someone's body before until we just finished a good chicken food uh, lunch and then he like slumped back in his chair ready to receive the Mandalorian and I saw his face slowly disintegrate. How you feeling? It was literally everything we said we didn't want to happen. I mean... (laughs) (laughs) For those of you at home, I'm not privy to any of this information. Yeah, Yeah. so the last episode we did mention uh, way back when that like, we said what are the things you wouldn't want to happen? And... Mine in particular was like, I don't want them to go, oh, let's go be the rebellion and fight the rebellion. As well as I didn't want like a love interest become to become his entire story, character arc. What did you not want to happen, Alan? Um, I, didn't, I didn't want Baby Yoda to stay there forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks like he is, but or it is, but I don't mind mm-hmm. so much now. Sure. But just the tacked on love interest thing really irked me. Mm-hmm. The entire episode really irked me, cause. Go on. I gotta say this. When, when in a western, right? When mm-hmm. when when the sheriff or the cowboy has to has to travel through a town, mm-hmm. right? He has to travel through it, and that town has its problems, and that town ne- relies on him, right? The, the the newcomer, the the new guy to like come and fix these. You're we know who you are. Come and do this, please. And like the sheriff can be like. No, I can't have my own thing going on. And he leaves, right? But then he turns around and is like, ah, this town is something, isn't it? And then he goes in and like, I can't he, quit you. He can't quit you and yeah. he does his thing. Um, there's usually a reason for that. One, uh, the sheriff stopped by, he got acquainted with them and all this other stuff, right? But why did he stop by that town? Because uh, it was in his route, right? From A to B, there was that town in between, unfortunately. And that's where the story begins, right? In this one, the town comes to the Mandalorian somehow. They tracked him when they don't even know what anything is. He had a big ship. He had a big ship, and they were traversing through the swamps. It's like, this looks like a ship I've seen before. Does it belong to perhaps a Mandalorian? Perhaps, perhaps, maybe, perhaps. Perhaps, maybe, Ooh, perhaps. This is an interesting thing to get. And he to- goes in, and, and they were like, hey, we, you're, you're Mandalorian. You're Mandalorian armor, aren't you? It's like, yeah. Also, we don't know what an ATAT whatever is. We've never seen one of those before. Nice ship you got here. I've seen plenty of these. It's they, like I don't. They, they said that they weren't going to tell them about the ATST. Yeah, but like the thing is, it, how can I say this? How do you know so much about one thing without like having this part and like be involved? You know, it's like you don't mm-hmm. like. For example, you don't know. Uh, you don't know much about. Uh, you know, uh, military shit, but yeah, you know yeah. what a gun is, and you know what it, <laughs> you know what it does, right? If you see a bigger version of a gun, it's still a gun. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, okay, like it's okay. like, oh, this is a missile style, but you're a computer engineer. There's no way you would know about that. He's like, what? I, I want to jump in and say this actually speaks to just a fundamental problem with Star Wars, which Star Wars never knows which battles it wants to pick. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like you are going to never have to worry about how long it takes for us to actually fly yeah. from Tatooine to what was once Alderaan. Yeah. We're just going to assume that takes an arbitrary amount of time that no one feels like explaining. Mm-hmm. And then in the new trilogy, it's like, but we're going to d- explain all the fundamental mechanics of jumping faster than yeah. light speed. Mm-hmm. And we're going to collide ships at light speed. And running out of gas. Do, yeah. Running out of gas at light speed. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, guys. You get you get what? You get, well, like, it's, yeah. it's a space fantasy. You get to mm-hmm. live in the fantasy or you get to live... In the space. Okay. There was something you mentioned when before we started that like that's the glory of Star Wars that they can play around with is that they're not Star Trek. Star Trek is sci-fi, science fiction. It needs to have a scientific backing, mm-hmm. while Star Wars is a space opera or a space fantasy or a space ace whatever. And it's completely and it can do whatever it wants because of that. And that's where I would say like I didn't mind it as much. I did have a similar thought that like I don't mind it as much because this episode I was like okay it's a space fantasy. They're trying to tell this space western Samurai 7 in the same way. 
But because of that, because it is a formula, it did slip into that where I was like, I know exactly what's going to happen. And that there weren't really, not only were there not really consequences to the episode, but also the fact that like, it's it really was just meant to be like, he has a good heart, but he has to be on the run for the rest of his life. Like that was ultimately it. And that he, it basically was like, what if the battle on Endor was like, not super campy, still campy, but not like little Ewoks campy. What if, what if the battle of Endor happened but no one gave a <laughs> That's what that's what this was. Oh my heart. Because serious no, oh. no 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 seriously. But here's the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. You were right yeah. in a specific way. Like when you think about every time the rebellion ever fought the Empire, mm -hmm. it was like, and then suddenly this terrorist attack happened. Mm -hmm. Like the entire thing to think about is from the perspective of everyone else in the galaxy, mm -hmm. this big established entity who provides some sort of resources and jobs and security, whether you want it or not. Sure, sure. Just got its entire situation handed it to itself by literally a terrorist attack on two of their most beloved crown jewels in the literal Empire's crown. Yeah. Yeah. The, like, star, the Death Star, Death Star 2. Yeah. And, and like going back to my analogy with the Western guy, you know, yeah. the sheriff. The sh when the sheriff leaves, right, he leaves that town, he leaves it better than what it was, right? Yeah. He leaves with like fresh, like, you know, memories, like all, all these great things. Mandalorian left with less ammo. That's yeah, it. This and entire episode could have been scrapped off, but we could have moved on to the next thing, and no one would have noticed. But he has a friend now in a ex stormtrooper. I don't think it was implied she was a stormtrooper, <laughs> yeah, though. She, they said that. She said shock trooper. That's shock what they trooper, said. Yeah. Yeah, she was an ex shock trooper. She was trooper. one of those ones with the jet packs, and she it. jumps in, she goes, ah! Oh, oh, a new, th that's a new thing? Because in the, in the, in the Star Wars Episode Nine trailer, they were just like, ooh, they fly now? I'm like, yeah, stormtroopers have always, they're called shock troopers. They're, They've always done that. Dude. And it's also a class on Battlefront. The good one, the not game. the bad. You remember <laughs> 15 years ago? <laughs> Abrams, come That's on. how I knew about him. I was like, oh, I yeah. know a shock trooper. They're in the games. Yeah. Here's like, but, okay, so we're focusing on the two more recent episodes. Yes, yes, yes. Which episode three, pinnacle of the season. Episode four, snappy, nappy time episode. Episode three was really good. That's the thing is like, you're really worried good. about the secrecy and the fact that they're trying to protect, like, it's clear that the entire reason for this story arc, the reason the Mandalorian is focused on this, is because of Baby Yoda. Yeah. That's the inciting yeah. incident that governs pretty much every action that's happened over the last four episodes. Yeah, it's sure. Baby Yoda. So, yeah, they're not going to get rid of Baby Yoda as of much course. as they want because that's kind of fundamental to the plot. Mm -hmm. And I have a bigger theory Ooh. about how I, how I personally hope, I know for a fact it's not how it's going to go, but how I want the Baby Yoda thing to be resolved. Go on. But... I'll get to that in a second because I feel like that's a good. Game. Okay, fine. Mandalorians, they're ethno linguistic. <gasps> Anyone can become a Mandalorian. And they've had a force sensitive Mandalorian. There's the Darksaber, which was a black lightsaber oh, yeah. that belonged to someone from House Vizsla, who was like the only <laughs> Mandalorian <laughs> who became a Jedi and then bailed on the Jedi to become Mandalore. That feels exactly like my first OC, where it's just like, I'm a cool, I, okay, my character, he have jetpack and a cool helmet, and he's a Mandalorian, but guess what? He's a secret a Jedi, and he has a lightsaber, but it's a black, because nobody else can have a black lightsaber. <laughs> when I first heard that, that I'm just legit. like, That was legit. Come on. I, I guess, yes, you're correct. <laughs> I'm, I'm That's fine the only with way it. I, I, write, it. I, I love Shadow the Hedgehog. I have no, <laughs> I have no reason to complain. <laughs> but like, I, when I heard that, I'm just like, oh, Oh, this is adorable. It's less shoehorn than making Mace Windu have a purple one. Yes, yeah. which is Far great. Far less shoehorn it's than that. It's a great backstory for something so stupid. I love it. No, but, but like, the, like yeah. that's the thing though, is like there is like this opportunity for character interplay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That comes out of the fact that he's a Mandalorian and he's trying to do this thing. And like the point of the episode is he doesn't want to settle down. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to like hang out with these dudes. He's like, he only does this because he thinks this will be an opportunity for him to like keep Baby Yoda somewhere off the grid and safe. Yeah. As like, he drinks the, his little soup. That's mm -hmm. the thing is like, there's always a lot in Star Wars, there is always yada yada ing of how the hell did we get here? How the hell did some idiot kid on a sand planet find two droids that dragged his ass all the way to blowing up the Death Star literally hours late? Yeah. Literally hours later. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, like, it, that's a movie, so it's supposed to be, like, you know, quick and, like, justified in that way. But, like, for this one, it just felt like... 
in, in to combat that point, they literally said it took weeks. They said like, wow, we did a good later. thing weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That's like, true. Wow, this is they they really hung out there. Oh for no, a I thought weeks. No, I was trying to say that and about the original part where they land on the planet. It's like, why did these guys find them? Why did any of the things that yeah. lead to them fighting a chicken walker happen? Yeah, plot convenience, yeah. which is totally. I think that's justifiable. But at the same time, it's justifiable when it doesn't feel kind of ridiculous. And it did, it, it legitimately felt kind of silly how things kept progressing. Because it went from like this really intense, interesting uh, show about like there's this one character, this is all going, this is the way, all that stuff. Like that, it just, it felt so, uh, no camp. It was like, no, the only camp that was there was just played straight. This one felt really... There was too much levity in it in the same in to be in the same series in my in my mind I didn't mind it, but I get why people wouldn't <laughs> uh, I honestly think that like they kept going with the lore like we mentioned like mm -hmm. you don't take off your helmet If somebody sees you then you're no longer in the, the world subtly. Yeah, yeah, he took off his yeah. hel helmet in front of the window full of kids. Yeah Practice saying, Hey kids <laughs> Come look at look. this strange face. Exactly. So you know, it's like what? There's and, a like, lot he, in there. He's eating his sponge bread with a little bit of beans in next to it, and, <laughs> and like you're just gonna open your helmet, especially you, oh, when you're you, gonna, you gonna let it get cold, huh? huh? You gonna let the sponge bread oh, get cold? Oh, he used his helmet to keep the stuff warm as he, he ate. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that what you? No, it's like oh, the, he let it sit. Oven <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He takes it off, puts it on. It's a con people convection don't know oven. The secret <laughs> se second use of Besker metal and a metal. His antenna is actually just a button to start it. <laughs> you just, just press it down. Oh it goes my god! And when it's ready, it's yeah. like light rotating yeah. inside the. Oh my god, like... that'd be so funny. <laughs> like, oh no, we've painted a very, very dangerous. And then this awful. Like, hey, let's shoehorn. Let's mix. It, let's make him more human. This entire episode yeah. was like, hey, let's make him more human. Yeah. When we don't need that. Yeah. We don't need that. Him taking care of a child is human enough. Yeah. I, I can relate to him already. I don't need two idiots, dumb and dumber too, coming in and being like, hey, I recognize that armor, but I've never seen a lightsaber before. Crazy, right? Mm, yeah. I know that armor, uh, but I've never used a toaster oven. I don't know. Sorry, it's, dude. I like how these guys I, get progressively dumber every time. They're, they're stupid. They did. They I don't legitimately. Know to, no, no, no. Like, like, every time Alan has described this as we started recording, it's been like, hey, it's just like, I don't know. Anything about breathing or basic human <laughs> functions or how to keep my bowels inside. Yeah. But I know what Mandalorians look like. Yeah, I know what Mandalorians look like. Also, what? us two, we can beat a warlord. No problem. Let's poke him with a with stick. Holy moly. They, yeah. they legitimately. And the thing that I didn't realize until second showing, watching it, is like they have the big ATST, which one of the one of the people must know how to use. But they all had sticks. Did you notice that like all the no, they, all the marauders only had sticks? Yeah. So I, I don't understand how they how they could have even had a fighting chance to begin with. Yeah. It's like, okay, distract that thing. We'll just mow him down. We'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Like, a good thing he also has, like, a crazy armory, like, for everybody to have a gun. Well, I also think that speaks to the fact that, like, in the grand scheme of Star Wars, this is truly small potatoes. Yeah. Like, this is... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the stakes are so... Like, l realistically, if the Mandalorian wanted to, he probably could have just snuck into the camp and thrown a thermal detonator right into the frickin' um, chicken walker and just like, and we're done. I don't need to do anything, because I don't care. Yeah, why did he blow up the moonshine stuff? Like, what was that necessary? To get them out? I think this... To provoke them. Well, like, there's like a bigger... I, I wonder if they're actually trying to speak to like a bigger thing about like... Like, the point of Mandalorians and the point of like a lot of things in Star Wars is like, you don't get to solve other people's problems for them. I I would disagree in the fact that this, all the problems with this episode are plot convenience for them to have a Seven Samurai episode. Because mm. wh why didn't he go blow up the, the ATST? He could have done that really quickly. Why didn't he just light them up all on fire? Why didn't he just go in guns blazing? They don't have guns. <laughs> There's a bunch of reasons. And the main reason they didn't is because then the episode would be done quicker, which is just a fundamental it's a fact that the episode wasn't written to be like that. The episode was written to be like, oh, he's a cool... It's It was written to be Seven Samurai. And unfortunately, in my mind, not only the editing, but the like execution made it feel like, okay, well, this episode is supposed to have this story arc. We're going to do it. We're going to get from A to B, and that's what's going to happen. And it didn't feel that, and that's what the other episodes felt better. Even when the all the Mandalorians speak of episode three, when all the Mandalorians fly over a freaking archway and are like pew pew pew, this is the way. That felt more deserved because you were like, how is this going to end? Like he's stuck, mm -hmm. and the way that it could end is one, he could I don't know have a hail mary hidden up his 
sleeve, or like Baby Yoda could do a force thing and get him out of there, or the Mandalorians who have already showed that they're that they don't like what he did, and now that he's making up for it, and however what pl whatever plot convenience they had for hearing what he's doing, they're coming to help him because they know he's trying to fix what he did. That's see that kind of plot convenience feels good because you're like cool this not only informs their characters but informs his characters as well as when he flies away he's like i gotta get me one of those when the jetpack shows up th those all feel cool and earned because those are things that you want to see well in this one it feels like they shoehorn together seven samurai because they want to do seven samurai i should point out there's if you wanted me to be nitpicky about it Sure. There are logical reasons for everything that happens in the episode. Okay. It's pretty clear by the end of the episode that his intention was never to actually live on this planet yeah. with Baby Yoda. It was basically like he needed a quiet place to leave this child that ideally no one would ever find him at. Mm -hmm. And so if I show up and I am the gunslinger, the literal only reason your entire village was able to protect itself from this big bad threat. Sure. And then I leave. Yeah. They're not going to be super awesome with, you know all right, you left behind this kid, or what happens if there's trouble in the future? This this informs that he's trying to give them the confidence I'll, to do it themselves. I'll argue it's like a guy coming, it's like a bunch of people that have been barefoot all their lives, and there's a bunch of scorpions around, and a guy shows up with boots, and he just smosh, smushes the scorpions. Well, he he's like, them. this is fine, because I'm only going to be here for three weeks, and then I'm going to leave, and it's okay if Baby Yoda's here with them, because it's not a huge deal. Like, okay, if he went into the, that was not the greatest thing. Well, I was going to say, like, he teaches them how to make their own boots. And that's fair. But let's say that he just goes into the place and blows up the, uh, kills all the marauders, blows up the ATST, and then comes back and then kicks up his feet. I, I don't particularly think that there's much of a difference than him showing up with the guns, giving them guns, and then taking the guns away when he leaves. Now they just know how to use a stick. Like, I wouldn't really say that they're that much better off now, and that... Uh, Damn, you're really reaching right now. My no, just my main issue is just the fact that like he shows up and then he's just it, the the one dialogue line that I was like kind of taken aback by because I knew it was super cliche is when she's just like I've seen those things destroy squadrons of or whatever a, a company of soldiers. He's like, what are you guys? How are you guys going to do it? And he's just like, if we teach them, I'm like, okay. Are you really going to? Like, really? Are you, you're going to go out of your way to do that whole thing? And I get that that's informing us of his character, but at the same time, like, he, he didn't need to do all that. They didn't need to do any of it. And it is all plot convenience for the fact that, cool, we want to make it, him to look empathizable. We want this to have a three-act structure. How are we going to do that with this thing? That's what that adaptation comes in. But unfortunately, it just feels really hammy because it feels like something that someone that badass with also a cool shock tro ex shock trooper wouldn't really be doing. I guess that's that's a gripe that I can see. Pe I personally I enjoyed it. I actually did enjoy the the episode, but I could see people being like, "This was stupid," and these are why. Like, I get those acts need to happen for an episode to happen. Like, that's why they're they feel more like plot holes than nitpicks. I would say. All right. Well, the, so the thing with me is, Go for it. I agree with you. Like, what, what, literally, what you, what we just saw was, literally happened in someone's backyard. Yeah. Compared to like this entire galaxy was at war with a giant ship, you know, it's that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But the thing, the thing with me is, this entire episode was literally just filler. Yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. like that's fine. That's fine. Not for an eight chapter thing. That's fair. Yeah. Like, why? We're all gonna we're all gonna see the entire series, and we're gonna be like, oh, that was great. Remember episode four? It's yeah, like and this oh, is mid season too. Yeah. Oh wait, episode four. They had zero link to anything. This was a crappy side quest in a video game that they decided to record. I can see the shock trooper showing up. Oh yeah, I can. I was gonna say Which I'm is... willing to bet that she's gonna show up. And also, they gave us the smallest taste of a backstory for the one girl. Yeah. That yeah. like is bizarrely good at shooting. And he's probably gonna. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, based on if they want this to have any weight, he's gonna show up at the end of the show and like go, be there with the girl. Like the. If I'm making a prediction, right now I'm pretty sure one episode, like episode six or seven, he's going to be in a fight with someone, in a fight with Carl Weathers, the uh, like black dude, and he's just going to take off his helmet and be like, oh, we all saw you, you can't be a Mandalorian anymore. And he's going to be really beaten up about it, and he's going to exact his revenge and then go back to them. That, I don't want that. But that's basically what this episode made me feel like they set up. 
which is I don't want Carl Weathers also, to be his arch enemy. Also, you 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 gotta say like yeah, I'm gonna leave baby green boy and, and be like, oh wait, there's like a bounty on his a head. bounty on his head. Oh I have too much blood on my second helmet. Sorry, I don't know what to tell you. Also, you, you look like my mom. I have the hots for you. The mom? What are you? Yeah. We never see his mom, really. Yeah, we do. Barely. Yeah, that's no. enough to make him look filthy peasant woman. Thank you. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Like, ser like okay. seriously, that's okay. all it was. Killed by blaster droid. Where are you gonna I didn't say, even put those two things together. Yeah, I didn't that's think about that. Yeah. Wow, that's some edible Actually, stuff wait, right I there. want to say real fast, going back to the Separatist Purge thing. Sure. And the battle droid showing up. Yeah. I do like how that plays into his character development. Yeah, of course. And the entire reason he's able to sympathize with, like, every single one of the, like, every single one of the, like, even this village is, like, he was from a small village mm -hmm. that totally got dunked on by, yeah. in their case, actual, like, droid army, but in this case, equally annoying marauders. So I could totally see him being like, Dang it, you, this yeah, works you. out one for one with me. Mm -hmm. Because like before, the only reason he even feels for Baby Yoda is because he too was orphaned yeah. and had all had, been, had life dunk on him until the Mandalorians came and broke down with him. You just made me do a 360 on my entire, well, 180, on my entire <laughs> opinion. I, I did I a 360 and walked it back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, no, I mean like the fact that that's basically, we've seen that that's his entire, the thing pushing him forward is his origin story of like being a kid that was uh th his family was taken from him mm -hmm. so yeah i mean that does actually play a lot into it i guess i wasn't huh, i wasn't even yeah, really but thinking i also that wonder which one out of its may possible thousands of other bounties had the same thing maybe i mean when was the last time you found out you were going though. to go after a 50 that's the thing though is like mandalorians i don't remember this any part of the actual codex but like most hitmen in all forms of pop culture don't typically go after children. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. So, tricking him into going after a child who is 50 years old mm -hmm. would be the ideal way to trick him into going after someone he would never normally go after. Yeah. yeah. And, just because I wanted to say this, because we're, we're kind of going a little bit out there, is that I'm pretty sure that he would have, if he was a legit Mandalorian way back when, he would have not been as bad with animals, because one of the uh, trials of a Mandalorian is to uh, slay a mythosaur, or at mm -hmm. least, like, confront one. And there was a comic where, I watched one video about this, that uh, there was a comic where uh, Boba Fett is, uh, Jango Fett is teaching Boba Fett, and they go confront a mythosaur, and it, like he literally just puts the back, the jetpack on Boba Fett, and he's like, go, and then he's like, there you go, go fight a mythosaur, and he almost dies, and he comes back, he's just like, what was that for? He's like, nothing's gonna be as scary as that was. <laughs> Let's go. That's literally like, the, that's the the lesson, and, and I like, I feel like that's one of the cool things that, like, if you read into it, you'd be like, oh, he hasn't had that trial. So he doesn't, he, as a Mandalorian, he wouldn't know how to, like, handle well, The other thing is supposedly Mythosaurus are extinct. Also that, which I assume he's going to ride one by the end of the series. Oh, you know no. what? Sure. I, I, so. I would love to see, like, we kept one in captivity for you. I feel bad now, legitimately. I, I, I enjoyed the episode, but I, f I felt the anger in me brewing of just like, these are why this is bad. Like, I legitimately didn't hate that episode, and I get people that do. I've watched that episode three times, and I still do not dislike it at all. And I'm Fair. amazed Fair. by the amount of varying opinions that have happened in this room. And <laughs> yeah, I'm just still now. completely just, on the, this is a fine episode. I'm in the middle of the road, this. though. Like, just, yeah. Like come on, you have you have Batman Detective Vision mode, but you're not gonna see Big Big Robot. I still love not, that. I still gonna, absolutely he, he, he love that. He technically saw past like, Big Robot. Huh? He saw footsteps and like, oh, these are the biggest footsteps. I'm not gonna use my device. It's big enough. I can track it. What's that in the woods? The devil. The fucking Actually, two <laughs> big red eyes and like suddenly shooting blasts at a, you. But that was a good shot though. When it's like a low angle oh, and it yeah, keeps getting lower. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. No, and then like let's destroy uh glow in the dark uh, uh, <laughs> drugs. They're probably alcohol here. Mandalorian think, is straight edge. I, here we go, <laughs> grenade, and then just like that's where they put the krill. I'm pretty sure, like their food. Like no, that. they were sipping the the, the glow in the dark. They were they were yeah, literally the glow drinking in the dark chemicals. Fish. Yeah, they brew the glow in the dark fish. I guess. I guess so. And they turn into glow in the they dark moonshine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they turn into Spotska right. or whatever they clear, said. They said that word totally too many times. He drinks that stuff. It's huh? Like the, the ideally is not. If that is an alcoholic beverage, he did not feed it to Baby Yoda. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, unless 50 years old is a legal drinking Yoda, age for yeah. Yodas. That's what Baby Yoda waddles. I love it. He's constantly drunk. Oh my God. Also, come on. The, the pinnacle of that, move, that episode was unfortunately like the first 15 minutes where yeah, like really she's upside down and he's 
They were both looking at the guns at each other, and mm. Baby Yoda's just framed in the shot, drinking his cup of That's whatever. That's become a huge meme now. Oh, yeah. It's just like, it is the meme. We'll see by the time this comes out. There's probably another Star Wars meme out there. But it's just like, uh, your, your mom while you're opening presents on Christmas Day. It's, just, <laughs> it's great. That and... Uh, what was with the... Like, I, I would say they set the stage decently when he shows up to the planet and he's just like, what's her deal? Or, like, he's just like, hey, give me some broth for him and do whatever. And the lady's just like, she doesn't understand what a bribe is. Mm -hmm. So she's just like, what's what's her deal? And she's like, oh, I don't really know. And he gives her the bribe. She's like, thank you. Um, I'll get you more food, I guess. <laughs> he's like, hey, watch the kid. And throws things. And he's like, I... And, like, uh, and then does it. Yeah, she's just like, I don't... I, I yeah. got a job. This is my one gig. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, this is, I own this place. Yeah. I have to do this i um also mm. i personally just wasn't a fan of the uh, choreography in this uh, okay like the fighting between him and her was uh, awesome but yeah but like then when they were fighting like inside the uh the moonshine st uh, yeah. facility it's like you guys clearly have blasters why why are you in this brawl just actually they did have, already yeah one guy had a blaster so well no i mean they had blasters but yeah, one had, dude came in with a blaster yeah had to be it, sneaky boys actually that's also fair you're gonna be a did, sneaky boy or else you get big atst yeah but literally the first scene we see in t the entire show is him taking down six people yeah with not even a blaster hey, you gotta be sneaky or no he did have a blaster yeah, he, but still didn't have to be sneaky when he's smashing a literal coffee mug over someone's head that's yeah. fair i don't know this is my problem is that i'd like I don't want to hate the episode, but I can see my no, brain. No, actually hating it. It's just like, he, yeah. he hears this problems in it, you know? Yeah. It's an important thing, man. People are allowed to like things. Even if you want... People dunk on the Speed Racer movie all the time, but Yo. you and I know that is completely so, fine to love that movie. talk about Speed Racer movie. On that note, we have we have a couple more minutes left, and I think it would be a good time to plug. Uh, thank you so much for being on our podcast, Cameron. Where can people find you? What's what's going down? Why why are we doing this episode? Maybe to, to you could, you could go listen to the episode that we do with Cameron on his channel. So this is part of an epic crossover event. Exactly several hours in the making. The most ambitious crossover event ever. Uh, they think it was Avengers and End War, but we it have wasn't. more characters in our crossover event than all of the Avengers movies put together. Mm -hmm. So yes, I do a podcast. It's called Sweating the Small Stuff. We are wherever you get podcasts. That is, again, Sweating the Small Stuff. Find us at Small Stuff Show or Small Stuff Dot Show. And that's exactly it. Like, we love talking to people. Smart people like you guys. And exploring all sorts of dude. I know, I lie a lot. <laughs> and exploring all sorts of the minutia and overlooked details of all sorts of things that we all love, but we don't necessarily always understand or appreciate. And fortunately, thanks to your generous time, we have a special episode on our podcast where Keon and Alan help me explore what exactly space westerns are and why Star Wars kind of just kicks so much butt. Yeah. As for me, I do my own YouTube channel. I have my own Twitter, Instagram, wherever you want to find me. I'm Wildcard Cameron. I realize that's kind of a fun goof that <laughs> no one will ever understand unless they go check out the channel or understand anything about me, but it's it's just fun, and we just try to have fun, and I'm really glad about the episode that we do together, so <laughs> thanks, we'll guys. See, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how it goes. I have high hopes, because, man, you guys, what you were doing on this channel, I am so infinitely excited every single oh, time no. I fun. Like, I, this is the only YouTube channel on the planet that I have turned on the notifications for so that when a new episode or anything happens, I'm like, well, guess I'm going to now have to put aside everything I'm doing right now to watch this. Oh, thanks, pal. Well, like four seconds. Are you, what are you doing? So is there a shadow? The ghost? light is casting right on my, my, my Willard. Your and, and like, I, I just noticed that. I'm like, oh geez. I think we're, you know, your brother is doing the exact same thing that the Mandalorian just did. He's just having gonna, a bad episode. He's going to show up. He's going to do his thing and then he's just going to leave. He's going to mosey through. He's like mosey like through. we didn't even matter. Yeah. I'll cry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Sorry Thank for you, the Cameron. crotch light. It's fine. You don't need to... Are you serious? It's me? right there. You're the DP. You need to know about these things. I had it the sun move. Jesus. <sighs> Emphasis on P, am I right? Cut it. Cut everything. Oh, no. Is it still, it's still there. Okay, Can you guys Photoshop it a boom arm falling into the frame just to sell this shit? <laughs> <laughs>